Hello, everybody. It's Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs, the fundamentals analyzer software tool. And, you know, all my career, I've always sought the perfect stock. But I do want you to know, and I want you to know that I know, that in the real world, there is no such thing as a perfect stock. But as I stated earlier, you know, it doesn't stop me from trying to find one. Because what I'm really trying to do here, to be more practical about this, is try to find stocks that are as close to perfect as you could practically find. So how do I define that? What is a perfect stock? Well, you know, uh, to me, it's a company that basically has a consistent operating history. The example I used in the article was Anthem, which is obviously a managed care company. And I've got a plotting of the company's historical earnings per share here on the graph. And I'm drawing it at a P ratio equal to its growth rate or a PE of 16.36. We'll call it 16.4 rounded. Here's what I want you to focus on. We had the recession of 2000 company did extremely well. We had the recession of 2001. It had you know a few pennies of earnings stress, earnings down 1%. Otherwise, year after year after year, this company has grown its earnings. And its growth rate in more recent years actually begun to accelerate a little bit. So first off, as a perfect stock, I'm looking for a company that can produce this kind of historical consistent record. That tells me that the company's well managed. It tells me that they're product or service that they offer is, you know, in high demand, or certainly there is a demand for it. And, you know, it tells me that the people behind the company know how to run this business. So I like to see this kind of history. Now, there are other examples, like I'm going to look at one of their competitors in the managed healthcare industry. I'm going to look at a company called Centene here, which also has a great record. In fact, if I was only measuring it for the last seven or eight years, it could actually qualify as one of my perfect stock candidates. It has a triple B minus rate only 40% debt. But what I want you to see the contrast here is you'll see this with many, many stocks is that the earnings are not as consistent as we saw here with Anthem. I mean, Anthem has really produced an enviable and I would call it impeccable record of growing their earnings each year. Now, in addition to that, when you look at a company's stock price, you know, earnings and cash flows, and I am starting to like cash flows even more than earnings to be candid about it, drive stock price in the long run. And that, that's really a fancy way of simply making the common sense statement that, hey, the better the business that you own does, the better your investment in that business is likely to be. So when I put monthly closing stock prices on this graph, and I'm going back, you know, all the way to 2001 here, you can see that the price tends to track earnings. Coming out of the recession, you know, they were below earnings, but they were still tracking where the earnings were going, eventually got back into alignment, got undervalued again, you know, and then went back up. But the point is, the stock price was driven by the company's operating results. Now, the next thing I like to look at is the quality of the company. And I talked about this. It's A rated, very good rating, 35% debt to capital. To me, anything under 40% is probably ideal, but certainly good. The next thing I talked about was dividends. So let's put the dividends and the dividend payout ratio. POR here stands for payout ratio. You can see that the company has initiated their first dividend in 2011 of a dollar. And then that dividend has increased every year since. And as you follow the white line here, and if I go look at the performance report real quick, you can see that the dividend has grown by over 16%. Now, coincidentally, that's very consistent and almost perfectly consistent with the company's operating earnings over time. They also have a very low payout ratio. So from a quality and impeccability standpoint, this is exactly a dream company. Is it perfect? No. But is it a dream company? Absolutely, yes. So, you know, when I look at this, I'm looking for a stock like this that gives me this kind of comfort. And then most important of all for me, as I've always stressed, although, you know, all of you that know me as Mr. Valuation know how important this is to me. I want to see the stock when it's undervalued. Now, it's had a recent rally here where the stock price has gotten close to being you know, at its intrinsic value again. But even after COVID here, we had an opportunity to buy this stock at very low values. And as you can see, anytime you can buy an impeccable stock like this, I'm calling it the perfect stock. And I'm doing that, of course, I hope you all know tongue in cheek, but it's about as close to perfect as you can possibly get because I love that consistency. Now, I'm going to go through this very superficially here or cursory. You know, it's I'm not getting into in-depth analysis here. But I just want you to see what I define as, you know, the perfect stock. So I promised you that I would show you several others. So I'm going to go ahead and go through this. These are 
common stocks right now, dividend growth stocks, the majority of them are, that, you know, I believe are meeting that standard of perfection or as close to it as possibly I can. Now, again, because there are no perfect stocks, AbV meets the criteria as far as operating history. The company's grown their earnings very consistently since they were spun off from Abbott Labs. And again, at an above average rate of over 15%. So I really like that. The company does have a little more debt than I like, but it is triple B plus rated, which is, you know, one notch below A, which is to me my real quintessential cutoff to call a stock perfect, but it's close enough to perfect to be a valuable here. And again, when I look at the dividend, the dividend has grown at a very fast, Fast rate historically. But again, it's still kind of new. The, the originally, they increased their dividend a lot. So when I then finally put price on the graph, I also see a significant undervaluation relative to, you know, the company's earnings and the ability for the company to grow and continue paying a dividend. It has a very high dividend yield, has a great earnings yield. These are all things that I look for. So AbbVie would be another example, a second example of a near perfect stock. The third example I'm going to show is Amerisource Bergen. And by the way, for the majority of these stocks are stocks that I am personally long in, and I've been long since they became undervalued. So here's Amerisource Bergen. Again, let's take the graph apart. We see a very excellent historical operating history, double digit growth. We see a great dividend record. If I look at the dividend record historically, they initially kept their dividend frozen, you know, from 2002, but then since then they've increased their dividend year after year after year. Again, no such thing is a perfect stock, but this is, again, about as perfect as you can get. A little more debt than I like, but it is A- minus rated. They are borrowing their money at very cheap rates. And again, when I look at the long-term performance, you can see that the company's performance has been excellent, and it's certainly tracked its earnings, and it's been consistent with what it did, considering the fact that it's undervalued. You know, it's pretty close to that long-term growth rate that it's been able to achieve. The next one is another stock in healthcare, and that's Amgen which is the world's largest biotechnology company. I like this example for several reasons. Again, when I take price off the graph, and even if I take dividends off the graph, you'll see that it has what I consider to be that almost impeccable record. Earnings growth has been double digit like we've seen with the others. And even during the recessions, this company has been able to eke out earnings growth. When I put dividends on here, they started paying a dividend in 2011. And again, you can see that they've increased that dividend and they've grown their dividend at almost 40% or you know 33.9 compound average growth 39.2 you know pure average when i put price on the graph now here's where the story gets interesting there was a time when this stock was overvalued and you can see that was a very poor time to own the stock but then coming into the great recession you know the stock got inexpensive and since that time you can see that it's been a stellar performer the market has had one of the best records ever it's produce more dividends and slightly more capital appreciation than the market. But the point is, it's literally almost a perfect stock based on the fact that it has all those characteristics I look like, except for a little more debt than I would like to see. So there's Amgen. And of course, I've covered um, Anthem. The next would be CVS the drugstore company. Some people would challenge me that this is far from being the perfect stock, but I tend to disagree because notwithstanding everything, and this is what happens, people get emotional and they talk about stocks relative to where the price is or how the price has done over short to intermediate periods of time. Frankly, the earnings here have been very, very consistent. When I take everything off of the graph and I look at this stock from a pure standpoint of earnings growth, again, double digit growth, you know, a little bit of faltering in the recession of 01, went through the recession of 08 like it wasn't there. Otherwise, this company has had great, you know, historical results. The price has generally tracked earnings. There are times when the market has really valued this at a very high value. There's a lot of reasons why healthcare stocks are inexpensive today, but this stock is certain very, very cheap. They also have an excellent dividend record, although they haven't grown the dividend record. So there are imperfections with CVS. But again, it's about as close as you're going to get. If I, you know, compare this to other stocks in healthcare that haven't had, you know, such great results, you can clearly see what I'm trying to get at here. I'm talking about stocks that have really good fundamental attributes. Here's Owens and Minor, which again is a healthcare distributor, but you can see they've had trouble. And once again, I want to show here the relationship between earnings and market price is very, very profound. But anyway, going on, the next one I'm going to look at is General Dynamics. Once again, we're looking at a stock here that has a very excellent, although not perfect, but you know, it's certainly a very, very good operating history. They have a couple of years where their earnings flatline, 
couple years where the earnings have fallen a little bit. But once again, they've grown at over 8.7%. By the way, the S&P over this time frame has grown somewhere between five and three quarters and 6%. So it's above average growth. When I put their dividend on here, you can see once again that their dividend has increased steadily year after year after year. It's A-rated, only has 37% debt. And again, I can buy this at a very, very attractive valuation today. So, you know, not absolutely perfect, but it's certainly in the model of perfection that I'm looking for in a common stock. Great quality, great dividend, great value. It's what I'm looking for, the ideal stocks that I can invest in. Johnson & Johnson would be the quintessential example of a perfect stock from a standpoint of the stock now and how the business has performed. As you can see, when I take price off the graph, Johnson & Johnson has had almost an impeccable record. They are expected to have a down year in 2020, but that's the first one over this entire history. They've grown at over 8%. And once again, we see the stock price correlates very nicely with earnings. And when it doesn't, those are typically less than optimum times to invest in the stock. And when the stock does correlate with valuation, those tend to be much better times to invest in the stock as it is with all stocks. The next company I want to show is another one in the aerospace and defense, Lockheed Martin. Very similar to what we saw with General Dynamics. We see a very good long-term record. Again, I'll take price off the graph. You can see that the business has been very consistent and very strong. The dividend record has been impeccable, averaging over 17% growth. Companies grow in earnings at double-digit rates. And then when I put price on here, you can see that the price tracks earnings over time. And that's one of the things I like about perfection is you get a much better correlation between price and earnings than you do with stocks that are, let's say, for example, more cyclical. Another one that's a little bit less than perfect, but pretty close. It has most of the characteristics I talked about would be another company that's quite interesting here, and that's McKesson, which is another healthcare distributor. Once again, I see this very consistent year after year earnings growth. I see a very, very consistent dividend record. I look at the company, it's triple B plus it has 48% debt. That's all pretty good. And then once again, I see that the price tends to track earnings. And when it gets disconnected from that, it's very, very visible, at least if you have access to fast graphs as I do. And it's very undervalued right now. It's not much of a dividend payer from a standpoint of current yield, but it really does have a great long-term record of growing their dividend. So this would be more of a total return situation at this point in time than a dividend growth situation. Another stock that I don't own just be for personal reasons would be Altria. I still call it Philip Morris. You know, their symbol is MO, which is the old Philip Morris symbol before they spun off Philip Morris International and of course Kraft and all these other products they had. But once again, when you look at the long-term operating history of this company, it's impeccable. Year after year after year growth, the dividend line the same. It's grown you know, quite strong. When I put price on the graph, we can see that price tracks earnings. It's become very undervalued here recently. And in spite of that, the company still has market beating performance and significant dividend outperformance. It's beat the market and, and we're measuring that at a great disadvantage because the stock I believe is significantly undervalued here. It's triple B rated, 85% debt. Again, maybe not absolutely perfect, but this is, you know, beginning to look like the picture of the perfect stock that I, you know, described in the written portion of this article. Next example would be a tech stock, which is Oracle. You know, it doesn't necessarily get all the acclaim that the Microsofts and the Apples do. But yet, if I look at this company historically, they have a very excellent record. Had a couple of down years in 2015 and 16. A very good dividend record since they've been paying the dividend. Dividend growth rate has averaged over 30% compound average growth rate. I can't really ask for more than that. When I put price on the graph, you can see there was the tech bubble where the stock was ridiculously overvalued. But since that time, we can see that the price has tracked earnings very, very consistently. Earnings growth has been over 13%. It's A-rated, does have a lot of debt. But as I talked about, you know, debt is not that big a problem when companies can borrow money so cheaply today as it has historically been, at least in my opinion. So the company has really excellent performance. I think it's very attractively valued here. It's not necessarily dirt cheap, but it's attractively valued here based on what, you know, expectations are for the future. Now, here's an example, the 11th example that I promised in the written portion. This is, again, only triple B plus, but does have moderate debt. The, the company is application software, so it's technology again, 
But when I look at this stock from the standpoint of its long-term operating history, I once again see a very, very excellent, almost impeccable record. Dividend growth has been steadily increasing since they started paying one back in 2013. It's grown very fast. So, you know, what I'm looking at here, I'm looking at stocks that give me a great deal of confidence that they have the ability to continue to grow their businesses. You know, this company is still expected to grow very nicely in the future. You know, it's not maybe as fast as it has historically been, but again, it's got those characteristics of perfection that I'm looking for. And this is in stark contrast, you know, to stocks that are very, very cyclical. Companies like a Ford Motor or something. I just try to avoid investing in stocks like that because, you know, I don't want to own this kind of inconsistency. I'm looking for the type of stock like I've showed you here, that have consistent earnings growth, good quality, good credit ratings, good strong businesses. And then if I can find them at attractive valuations, then I have a lot of confidence when I'm investing because after all, that's what this is all about. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little walk through what I would consider to be, you know, a short dozen, if you will, of really high quality, almost impeccably operated stocks with great long-term histories and great dividend records and good quality. So, you know, this is the standard. It's very hard to find stocks like this, especially in the dividend side. You know, you'll see a lot of stocks like Cummins, which I ha actually have long on and I've made a lot of money on, but it's a lot more difficult for me, at least, to invest in a Cummins that although they produce a really good record, you know, there's so many interruptions in between. It's very difficult. Great dividend record, great quality, great debt level. So, you know, this is not my quintessential example of perfect, but this is still, you know, a very good stock. But if I start with that standard of perfection, then I can, you know, take into consideration some of these others and still make good, long-term, safe and profitable investment decisions. And of course, valuation is always important. What would stop, keep me out of Cummins today is the high value. I hope you've enjoyed this. hope it gave you some insights and at least the ability to recognize that the, the companies do come you know, in all different types of characteristics. And I do like to learn from the past, although I always buy the future. I do like to learn from the past. And I like to buy companies that I have confidence are well managed and continue to be well managed in the future. And anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like it. If you felt this was worthy for more videos like this. And everybody be safe and have, you know, great weekend coming up. Thanks for watching.